Well, there I am, and I think everybody can hear me. Um, somebody, somebody uh, hit the chat feature real quick and give me a thumbs up and make sure you can hear me okay. Great, I just saw someone, thank you. So, hey look, uh, well welcome to our uh, webinar on fall enrollment. Looks like a couple of people are joining us now and uh, we appreciate you guys just jumping on. Give everybody one more minute and we'll get started. Well, awesome. That's great. Um, we're, we are pretty excited for today. You know, at Better Beans Branding, we have spent the last five years going in and out of child care centers and in and out of, out of plenty of retail businesses. And certainly in relationship to signage in general, we get to experience um, what your customers experience from the, from the brand that you portray. So today we're very excited to share that experience with you and, and help you understand the messaging opportunities to ensure your brand communication is right and ensure that the communication of the customer's experience uh, is what you want it to be in this, in this critical time of fall enrollment. Today, I'm joined by uh, Ted Wilcox, our Vice President of Signage Services, um, as our featured guest on our webinar today. So uh, Ted is gonna impart a ton of wisdom on you guys. He's been building and manufacturing and, and installing and creating and consulting on signage for a long time. Yeah, uh, for both small and big business. So uh, let's welcome Ted to our webinar today. Thank you, Ted, for joining us. Are you there? Hey, can you see me? Can you hear we me? We got you. Yeah, absolutely. How are Thanks you, Ted? I'm good. How are you? We're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. So what's going on in your world? Not much, you know, just dealing with the day to day, trying to keep everybody safe. Hey, there's my picture and my big brother. So <laughs> um, yeah, but just trying to keep everybody safe and stay busy. Excellent. Well, I know you're very busy. We've uh, Bread of Beans has had a lot of work right now, and uh, we're excited to see um, see the information that you put together today. So, hey, Ted, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your family. All right. So I'll tell about myself first. Um, I'm from a very small town of, in South Georgia called Fitzgerald, Georgia, where everybody knows everybody, everybody waves um, and say hello. So moving to the big city of Atlanta was real different for me. Nobody wanted to speak, and nobody's really friendly. Um, <laughs> But you, know, you, know, you get that with the city. Um, I have a lovely, beautiful wife. Um, her name is Nikita Wilcox, and we have three boys. Um, TJ, um, he's 13. Um, we have Trenton, he's 10. And we also have a new addition. Well, he don't seem like a new addition. He feel like he's been here forever, and he's three years old. Um, but his name is Treston, and he's 14 months. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great. It's good to get to know you and get to let the audience get to know your family. We're, we appreciate you being here today. Um, you know, look, you, we are really traditionally right now in the start of fall enrollment in the child care industry, and, and you've been supporting business owners and directors for a number of years. Uh, but obviously, with Treston's arrival to your family, you got to wear a new hat or a hat that you haven't worn in a long time. And you got to get out and see centers as a parent again and, uh, and get into schools and, and look at the enrollment practice and the uh, enrollment procedures from wearing a parent hat while also having worked in these buildings by installing signage and creating great signage for them. So what was that experience like for you? Tell us a little bit about um, your observations there. Yeah, that experience was different for me. Um, you know, it, there's a 10 year age gap between my middle son and Treston. So normally my wife took care of the, of the child care business, um, going in and visiting different places, but I actually went with her this time with Treston. And, you know, she's a, she's a teacher. So she kind of looked at it differently um, than I did. She looked at it as, um, you know, what are they going to be learning? How they're going to be learning? What time they're going to take naps? What time they're going to be changed? Making sure that she's getting pictures throughout the day, knowing that um, the new addition is, is good. Um, I looked at it a little differently from even from the arrival. So was it easy to find? Was the signage that they had exterior, was it visible? So I knew exactly where I was. And then when I came inside, you know, if, if I wasn't picking my child up, is there signage around the building that tells me how to get to my son? And also just signage that tells me exactly what these guys do and what makes them special. Yeah, that's excellent. You know, did you, you know, I don't, did you see a difference? Because you've been in hundreds of child care centers over the last five years. Have you, do you see a difference between the experience you had as a parent this time and the place that you picked versus either the national chains or the single individual unit mom and pops between, you know, what they're showcasing as their signage, as their announcements to your services? Yes, um, it, it was very different. You know, um, every center is different in its own unique way. Um, so seeing how people's 
different centers were getting that message across to the parents was, was very important to me. And I looked at it as how, how in a visible, um, how were they able to display that through, through signage, even if nobody told me, but I still knew exactly what they were doing at their center. Excellent. Excellent. Well, listen, I understand you prepared a, a list of some enrollment signage opportunities, and we're excited to see that and, and uh, share that with the business owners that are on the call and the directors that are on, on the webinar today. But before we get to that, I guess I'd like to ask you some, some pertinent questions about signage in general. So, um, you know, in, with our clients right now, they're thinking about investing in new signage or thinking about looking at signage in general in their, specific, in their facilities. What are some factors that you think they, they need to be considering um, as they consider, you know, an, a reinvestment in signage? Yeah, so some of the factors are, it comes to material, durability, placement, and, you know, visually being able to see what you're displaying. When it comes to material, you know, if you're going with, a, with your brand with a rustic feel, you don't want to use a lot of plastics and a lot of PVCs or, or a, a lot of acrylic in your, in your building. You want to get that rustic feel where maybe you have some aluminum and you have some wood throughout the building to show that brand of the rustic style. Um, and that's kind of where the materials come in and displaying what your brand is speaking and what it is. Uh, when it comes to durability, you want to make sure that whatever you have up is durable. You know, having kids at the, um, in the building, little hands want to touch everything and feet want to be on everything. So you got to make sure that what you put up is durable and is going to last a long time. When it comes to placement, um, where are you putting this stuff? You know, you don't want it to be Say if you're having, you're doing something with nutrition, you don't want to put it by the director's office. You want to put it maybe next to the kitchen where you're actually explaining what the nutrition and things you're doing. So that's what happens when it comes to placement, putting it in a good place where it's visual and it makes sense. Um, when it comes to visibility, you want to make it to where it can be seen. Nothing's high, and, um, nothing's behind it, covering up or anything. Say if you have classroom signs, like we have the classroom signs there on the top left uh, where it says infants. Um, you know, I could read that down the hallway and know exactly where I need to go to get my child or pick up my child and, and get them to the place where they need to be. Absolutely. So, you know, as you as you kind of talk about materials, do you see any new trends happening with materials right now? And um, do you want to speak to that at all? Yes. Well, what I've seen right now, just new trends is mostly something that, you know, you can wipe down a lot. Um, everything needs to be clean now. So having that right material, that durability is most important right now. So it's, it kind of varies. Um, we're not seeing as much wood as we used to be a lot of, you know, plastics and PVC where it's easy, wipeable and easy to clean. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So listen, right. You, you mentioned cleanliness and you're talking kind of, you know, helping us get to a place where, where we all are now. So with safety and sanitation at really at the forefront of everybody's mind, right. We are all working hard to um, address operations in, relate, in relationship to COVID-19. And uh, I guess I'd like to know from your vantage point as the, as the sign guy, what, what can directors and owners do right now to improve their messaging around their operations for, for this topic, right? Dealing with the pandemic in your business. Yeah. So the pandemic, you know, it's, a, it's, it's here. Um, so we need to be able to display something because we know a lot of things about the pandemic, but it, there are also a lot of things that we don't know and we need to display. So, you know, having good signage where if you stand six feet back, display that where people need to stand, maybe um, putting a graphic on the floor um, or, you know, kind of telling the steps that you're doing throughout the building to make sure everyone is safe that comes in. So being able to display that in a good way where parents can actually come in and see it and don't have to ask questions or even look for it to know what you're doing. Yeah, so in, in my opinion, we're, we're, as an industry, we're working on ensuring that we continue to be um, a place that is trustworthy. Um, that's ultimately the, the thing that we have the most of is, is what we're always trying to trade on is our level of trustworthiness, our level of trust. And so we're, we're trying to inform our parents and our families that we're competent, we're informed, we're ready to serve them. We have a system and a process we're responsive and then ultimately we're safe. And, and I believe that a hundred percent of your customers in your, in your business, in your facility, in your childcare centers are interested in exactly how you're going to respond to that. For us at Better Beans Branding, we call that a tour stop, right? So we're, we're saying, let me show you how we're going to earn your trust by delivering this level of information. So let's, right. um, let's take a look at another business and, and what they did, um, you know, or, or didn't really do effectively. What do you, what do you see here, Ted? Wow, I see a lot of stuff. Um, when I look at this, 
I just see the the bright colors and the the hand stop sign, the warning labels. So this picture is a, it's actually so everything that's behind this door is what you want to go in. Um, get medicine to make sure you're safe and you're healthy. Looking at this, it makes me feel like this place may not be too healthy. You know, um, just having some kind of way to display this signage in a better way um, to make sure that people know that they're safe once they're entering. Yeah, I think you're being pretty generous here. Honest, honestly, as I look at that picture, um, you know, to me, it looks a lot like the store owner decided to vomit everything they knew about COVID-19 on their front door. And it, it becomes an absolute barrier to me wanting to go in. So we've, uh, we've already split through to the next slide. But um, what it, you know, Ted, tell us a little bit about these two pictures, the, the differences between what you see here. Yeah, so, you know, as you can see, one of them's Home Depot and the other's Lowe's. Um, two companies that are in the same business looking for the same customers. Um, the Home Depot, when they have handwritten, um, to me, you know, they have the, the entrance stand six feet away. They have it on both doors, but the one on the left are really doing is justice because it's covered up by 100 customers in the store at a time. Um, so, you know, just good information is good, but you don't have to do that at all places. Um, you know, different ways that you do it, you just need to make sure it's clear and people understand with what Lowe's did, um, which I like a lot better. They stuck with their brand by getting their message across to their customers of things that they need to do inside the building once they enter. Yeah, I, I see their brand personalities coming out here in these two sets of signage, right? If you go into Home Depot, you tend to see more handwritten signage throughout their space. And so they're being true to their brand by putting signs up on their door that they produce internally. But in the end, um, I think, you know, the, the, the production quality of what the Lowe's store brand has done with this sign to me appeals better and it, and it sends a different level of professional messaging. And so there's two different sign components there. I'd love to, love to see that. So why don't we take a look at, at what we've done in the childcare space now? Yeah. So as the title reads, good signage, you know, this signage is important where we've made um, sanitation station signs for, for different customers. There on the left, we have Summit Kids Academy where they, they stuck with their brand, their colors, use pictures to display the things that they're doing throughout the building. And then most, most importantly is it comes back to vis being visible. Like this sign here is outside the door. So as soon as you come to the door, you know exactly what they're doing. And they don't have to tell you what they're doing. Um, so it's all about placement and putting it in a good location. The one there in the middle is Cedars Preschool, which is another one we did. And they stay to their brand, their colors and everything as well, and still displaying that message and having a nice clean sign. Um, the one on the far right is, is giving the same message, but it's showing that you don't have to have all the bells and whistles to get your message across to, so everyone knows what they need to do. You have your, you know, your sign there, laminated sign, easy, something easy to clean, which we talked about durability. So that's, that helps. You have your hand sanitizer there and also your napkin. So it's still giving that message without having all the bells and whistles. Yeah, I like that you point out that visibility obviously is important. Whatever you put up, I mean, uh, uh, under the assumption that what you put up is is done well, then placement matters, right? So um, that it is front and center. And I guess the thing that I would like to leave our audience with with, with this particular message in relationship to um, sanitation tour stops or cleanliness operating procedures or whatever you are conveying to your audience at this point in time, given the response needs for, for what we're dealing with in, in your operation, it, it should become a point of pride for you. It, it, should, it should instill confidence. It should instill confidence as well. And so placement right in your lobby um, at, at a prominent position, not hidden all the way in the back of the building, be proud of what you're doing so that you can showcase it and earn their trust. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still part of your brand. And that's yeah, what you want, to have. you want it to be true to your brand and, and get messages across the parents. Great, great. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the next item. Yeah, so here we have some exterior signages that, ref um, you know, there we have a building sign, it's nice and clean, it lights up, um, it's in good shape. Um, Below it, we have a monument sign. That's kind of what we talked about being visible, where as soon as I'm coming up, while I'm looking for your location, I can see exactly where you are. So your first impression is everything once you, you're, you know, you're visiting something. If you have a nice, clean sign, that first impression is they care enough about their sign outside that I know they're probably going to take care of and care about my child. And also when it comes to exterior signage, 
one of my biggest things that I could tell people is, yeah, have a good looking sign, but also if you're gonna use landscaping, have good looking landscaping. That is also a part of your brand and it brings life to your sign even more with your design of your brand. So all of that is important, being visible, being able to see, being able to read, being in good maintenance and having um, a good look when people are first arriving. Cause that's, like I said, it's their first impression of you and your brand. Excellent. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's take another look to the next one. Uh, slides not moving. There we go. Well, look, I, I, in looking at this slide, you know, these are instructional signs and, um, not only, uh, at least in, in two of these images, are there confusing messages or potential mistakes, but the reality is, is when, when you are directing through instruction, um, through a sign, you want someone to do something or you're providing instruction to do something, make sure that it's clear and concise. Make sure that you know what, what you can want done. Obviously, in this far left image, I have no idea when I'm allowed to park there. And yet there are five other cars right in front of me. So listen, at the end of the day, on any sign, regardless whether it's instructional or it's informative, say what you mean. And, and really, in, in our case, for the childcare space and the childcare industry, you don't have to say a lot to get a lot. So let's, let's kind of take a look at some of those. Yeah. So like you said, you don't have to do a lot to say a lot um, where we have middle school, um, their mission statement, there's not a lot of wording. There's not, the design is not crazy. They use their colors, they use their brand, and they also got their message across to what their mission is. The same thing when you look at the, the one on the right with the football player, um, it's, a, it's a high school here in the, in the Atlanta area, and they're telling you that the best is yet to come. That means that they're, they're bringing up athletes to be the best that they can be and so they can go on to the next level. So you don't have to say a lot to get your message across with these two signs here display. Yeah, I guess, Ted, I, I guess I, in, this, in this point that I'd like to make here for our audience, um, as you're working on signage, particularly tour stop content and tour stop signage, if you are in the midst of creating that information or you're in the midst of trying to isolate on what makes you best or what information you want to convey, understand that a sign, um, you know, 60% of your customers are going to get most of their information through all of their senses, but primarily vi um, visually, right? So your sign matters in order to ensure that they're not having to read paragraphs. You want to distill your information down to what really matters to them. So long paragraphs and, and a lot of words um, make it difficult to read. And, and also you don't want to as a director or as an owner, whoever you are working through that family in that tour, you don't want to have to read back the sign. You want them to be able to engage with the sign and still be able to listen to the touring process that you're taking them through. So I love what these two signs do with, you know, in less than 10 words, the Palmetto mission is really creative and simple. And, and I think one of the things that you brought up is that it allows the, the employees to really understand it and bring life to it as well too. It's not something that's a, um, a paragraph long that they then can't attach themselves to. So it was a great job. And, and obviously we, we all love that, that uh, football player as well too. So great. Let's, uh, let's go on to the next one. Ted, what, what do you see here? What I see here is a way of with everything that's going on with the pandemic is a way to tell people what you're doing without using any words. So it's kind of like when you're a kid, um, as my, my wife, she's a, she's a teacher, as I mentioned before, you know, you have your pictures and you slide them in, and you may have a picture of a cat or a dog and you want, the, want them to tell you what it is before you get to the spelling part. So this kind of helps that out in a way. And it also, it stays to, true to their brand. I don't know if you guys can tell or and see what, this, what, this, um, what company this is, which is Target, you know? Yeah. They they yeah. let they let people know that, um, employees know that we need, you got to wear masks, need gloves. We have hand sanitizing stations. We're also checking your temperature, so you can also get your message across without even using words, but using pictures from a visual standpoint to get your message across. Absolutely. Now, obviously, you you mentioned it already. This is this sign taken from a Target store is actually a a, a sign that is intended for the employees. But the point that we're making here is is that you can certainly can use that information for customers during the enrollment process. So it might not be this information, but you, the point is that graphics and icons can do the job of words as well. 
So that, that's a great example of, of how great um, uh, Target has done with something like this. And you see this being really consistent with their ads in general. They, they do a lot, of, a lot of this brand continuity pieces without a lot of words. So great job on their part. Uh, yeah, brand, brand is so important. So important. <laughs> so, Ted, what do you have here? What I have here, it looks like an old video game where I'm, am I learning information or am I going to play some games? Um, you, know, you know, too much information, information is good, but sometimes we can put too much information in one place. Um, so this is um, inside of, of, a, of a place where it's a digital display, you know, calm your screen down, you know, especially in the childcare business, at least for me, when I'm, when I'm taking my son to childcare, I'm trying to get in and get out. You know, I don't have time to click on everything and see exactly what's going on. So, you know, having something calm, good um, with the screen you can have in your in your business where maybe it's a slideshow and you're showing different pictures with the kids and events that you're doing, um, you know, things of that nature. Um, just calm the screen down. You don't have to display all your information without getting all the information out to parents. Yeah, I, I find that. So on the left here, this is a touch screen. Um, and on the right, this is um, what many of our centers and, and clients have as a lobby screen. Um, and so one is interactive, the other one isn't, but they're both displaying ways for the customer and the client to really engage each other. Um, and neither, some, both of them are so busy that you're actually forced to stop looking at it. And, and so I think neither of them serve the purposes, right? And I would challenge our our directors and owners that are on the call to stop and take a look at what you have on your screen. And, and a couple of things to think about as you look at your screen usage is, is how, um, how effective are you using it? And so what type of graphics are they, are you implementing? Do you have them on a loop? Is that loop just constantly playing the same thing over and over again every single day, or are you changing it? Um, are you getting variety in there so that people are, have a reason to look at it on a daily basis? So, um, excellent. Let's uh, let's go on to the next one. So here are some tips, um, you know, in relationship to screens in general, um, because they're becoming more prevalent, particularly in lobbies. Um, but but also, Ted, you had mentioned earlier that you know many of our clients use LED monuments outside of their businesses or, or um, you know as parts of screens as part of their monument. Um, and I think the information still applies, right? Update it regularly. Um, avoid using too much content. Um, keep your customers engaged by, by in putting on interesting content and thinking about the font choices that you're using and the graphics. And then, and then lastly, if you want them to do something, include a call to action. So if you're, if you're marketing an event, speak to that event and don't put more than what's needed on there. So if you have um, a parent night out or if you have an opportunity for them to engage with your referral program, or you have an opportunity for them to look into um, being part of your parent teacher association, then say so, but don't say more than that. Um, tell them how they can do what they need to do and who they need to get more information for from. So um, yeah. I love this last <laughs> bonus that you've got here, Ted. So careful with the loop trap. What does that mean? Yeah, with that, you know, you want to you wanna make sure that on the loop track you have something that's good. Kind of like you said, something easy to read. Because when you have digital monument signs, you know, people are flying by, you know, so they need something quick where you can actually, they can see. So like you said, parent night out, parent, it says that parent night out. So make sure that you update it regularly with different content. And you don't, like you said, you don't have to put too much content to still get what you're, what you're doing out to the public. Excellent. Yeah. The, and digital signage is becoming a real uh, core emphasis now. And so we love seeing that when you're using it. So what do you have here, Ted? Yeah, here we have a, a lobby that we did, um, Dermatology of Athens, to where it's nice and clean and and um, in the lobby area, you know exactly where you are. Like we talk about all the time, you know, when it comes to your brand, if I bring you into the play, in a place and close, and I, I close your eyes and you, I tell you to open them, you can tell me exactly where you are. So this this displays that by having the lobby, um, the logo inside the lobby of what it, where you are. Um, the one to the, to the right, um, that's Kids World. Um, and on her wall, she in the lobby area is nice and clean. And then with the science that's displaying on the wall to the right, it's showing the accomplishments and achievements that she's done 
um, with her centers and with the community. So just displaying the things that you've done in an area where parents are sitting to have time to kill. I mean, that's great. You, you displaying your brand and how much you care about everything that you do. Excellent. Yeah, I love that both of these are really consistent um, with, you know, their brand and, and the, the signage that both of them use um, allow the customer to kind of really start getting a message of, of what this business owner and director and, and management team are all about. So that's excellent. Ha. Well, the know? sign says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it's not like on a computer you where you have spell check, right? No, yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when we are responsible for changeable messages, there needs to be a system for checking it. And there needs to be a system for understanding that it's done well and done right. Um, would it surprise you to know that the left-hand side and, and both, both of these examples are schools? Yeah, that's, that, obviously that, that is um, detrimental to your reputation, detrimental to your credibility. Absolutely. Um, and just like the, the monuments to the left, like you have no idea what it is. Um, so, you know, having your logo on there wouldn't hurt anything either, as well as being able to spell the correct words that you're trying to, trying to put up there. Absolutely. You know, and also here, this one on the left doesn't do a great job with it. It's a, it's a, a masonry structure right on the ground and a patch of grass. So um, there's, there's some very inexpensive landscaping that can be done to dress that up. Um, but obviously, the biggest, the biggest telling absence is the fact that there is no brand here. There is no logo. So we don't know what, what this is attached to and, and who, uh, who exactly is committed to excellence. So that's great. Hey, listen, before we go on to the next slide, I guess I'll warn anybody. Um, we're all adults on this, on this uh, webinar. And so the next slide is a little bit more than G-rated. I hope you guys will forgive us, but it, but it clearly makes the point really well. So why don't we go ahead and slide over to that? Yes, <laughs> there it is. Um, you know, I'm to the to the design and the message, you're not really getting that. You know, when you're in school, your teacher used to tell you to write a word, use your index finger and, and know how to use the spacing. Um, here with their logo, it doesn't have any spacing. So it's not telling what the business actually is. So spacing and, and designs and, and, and all that stuff is very important to get the right message across to everybody that's seeing yeah, it. Yeah, we're really, we're really left up to our worst thoughts here. Um, you know, Kids Exchange is probably a really great consignment shop and Mega Flicks is probably, you know, a fantastic place to get DVDs and video games. So, but in the absence of knowing that because the sign is so wrong, you're left up to the worst things that you think about these two stores. Um, the one on the right, Ted, is, you know, they are a luxury apartment home and they spent a lot of money on this sign. And um, from a design and execution standpoint, if, if everybody's looking at this really carefully, you can actually see that the E that's in the word lake was um, not spaced right. And it's actually hanging off the sign. So, uh, so much for their luxury apartment homes and, and how well they plan, I guess. Yeah, the E was almost like it was an afterthought. Everybody forgot how to spell lake when it comes back to spell check. Yeah, so check your spacing. It matters. Let's, uh, let's move off of this one. What's going on here, Ted? Yeah, so this is a tour stop we created. Um, it, it says what it is, it's development. And at the bottom of that is there's giveaways or takeaways that, that kind of show where you can evaluate what your child is learning. And you can take this home read over it and see if it's actually working when it comes to your child's development. So signage can be used in all type of ways to display a message and also for parents or whoever to take away parts of the display so they can read at home and, and know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, I love what this did for this company. Um, this is one of our clients in, in Texas, the Pillars. Um, they are using this feature to, to ensure that they're actually sending a message of, hey, here's how we want to be evaluated. Take one of these cards. On the back of the card is a, a series of checklists or a checkbox about the assessment tools for that age group. And in it, as a result, they're telling you how to score them. They're telling you um, what they want to be evaluated on. And it, it's great demonstration of how functional signage can be. So we, we don't want to just design pretty things. We want to design form and function as well too. So that's, um, that's a great job on our design team's part. What's the next one? There we go. So look, I think we're at, at a point, you know, in our presentation where we want to move on to some rapid fire 
um, opportunities. And I guess, Ted, if it's okay with you, I'll take this first one. Hey, listen, the first one sh it says that signage should not be an assault on the senses. You know, when I see signage um, that there's too much of it or there's a lot of things going on on the sign, it makes me start to think of Las Vegas. And, and when I think about sensory overload, we want to really pick a sense that we want to appeal to on that sign and stick to that, um, uh, particularly, obviously, visual being the first priority. So um, signage should not be an assault on the senses. It should, it should support the senses. Um, and if you're looking at your signs in your building, you should be evaluating whether or not you're appealing to anything, um, uh, any of the five senses outside of the visual experience. Um, what's the next one? Yeah, so this one, kind of like we talked about before when with the monument signs, you know, if you're going to spend money on a monument sign and put landscaping around it, make sure the landscaping is taken care of, you know. Um, signs talk to people in different kind of ways and landscaping is very important to talking to your customers of, that you care enough you know, about your building and your signs to, you know, keep the landscaping fresh and, and up to date and not dead. Excellent. Thank you. Tip number three. Hey, this is the time right now where America has plenty of businesses that are not opening or opening on time. It's our responsibility to ensure that your community knows that you're open. So invest in, yes, we are open signage, whatever that has to say to ensure that as people are considering their childcare needs, they know that you're an option, right? And so particularly, obviously, if they're not with you yet. So get the yard signs out, develop some yard signs, develop some small signs that you can get on your property quickly to note to ensure that people in the as they're driving by your schools know that you're there you're ready to serve them and you are open yeah so on this one you know um like i said your sign should showcase your uniqueness and support your brand story so so many times we visit different centers and their story is amazing but they don't display a show or tell their parents of the things that they're doing. So these great, amazing things, you know, show that uniqueness to your customer, let them know what you're doing. And also by doing that, stay true to your brand um, and your story of your brand when you do these things. Yeah. One of the things, Ted, if you don't mind me interjecting here, one of the things I think better beans does really well is we we're focused on helping your, your school get credit for the great things you already do. And, and, you should want to ensure that your parents or prospective parents know what you do well. So tell them, tell them your uniquenesses first before you tell them about everything else. Make sure that they know what, what makes you stand out. So rapid fire number five, uh, signs don't replace interaction. Uh, it, it's obvious, right? You, you want to be able to ensure that your parents are, are understanding and your families that are prospect families that you're touring understand what you stand for, but don't let the sign do the work. You're, you have to, as a director or an owner or whoever is doing your touring, has to really understand the nuances of the messages. So be ready to explain the detail of what's going on with your, with your um, signs so that it's real, criti real critical that you're able to convey um, the nuances and the details as opposed to just reading a sign over and over again to, to a parent or, or at all. Um, all right, step uh, rapid fire number six. Yeah, so functional interactive signs, tour experience. Um, kind of like we had the, you know, the lobby signs, you know, having some kind of science to, you know, show parents what you're doing throughout the building with the kids and how much fun they're having, something interact um interactive um, that they can take a look at and it also it, it makes the tour more interesting uh, when you have some type of way to display what things that you're doing and the functions is going on throughout the building and through the space and through the, through the year so it's, it's a great way to interact um, have interactive signs that can improve the tour experience as well excellent thank you uh, number seven signage should move a tour through common areas so that the families see the high points of your operation. So as you guys are looking at, whether it's tour stops or directional signs, make sure that your, your process for enrollment ensures that a family sees your entire operation, especially the things that matter, especially the things that make a difference to that family. Excellent. Yeah, don't sleep on importance of directional and classroom signage. This is very important to me, especially um, owners who have like multiple buildings. So you, you know exactly where you're going. Um, 
um, classroom signs are important to that too. You know, um, you might have a, a toddler's class and, and the, the toddlers that's normally in that class, they're in the after school class. So you can tell that parent without leaving the front desk or wherever you are, hey, your child's in the after school class. So having an important sign, in it, um, that's important, just having those directional signs, pointing people in the right direction so they know exactly where they are and they can get there in and out quick. Excellent. Uh, we're almost to the end there, Ted. Number nine, hey, vehicles and vehicle graphics are moving billboards, use them. So if you haven't done an audit on the quality of your um, vehicle graphics or the quality of your brand that's associated with your bus, you should do so. Is it in, is it in the right state of repair? Um, does it reflect you well? Um, does, is, is the bus clean for that matter? So make sure that you're looking at the quality of your vehicle graphics and update them as regularly as necessary. Ted, what's the, what's the going kind of, you know, depending upon where people are in the country, the average for um, how long a set of graphics should last on a bus? Yeah, so most of the time, graphics normally last three to five years at most. Um, and the thing is, if you just clean them and take care of them, um, you know, if you want to do it every three months or quarterly or however you want to do it, the graphics are actually last a lot longer. There's different technology out here when it comes to signage now that they're making improvements to these these vinyls and this different type of material so it lasts a long time and look just as good as it, does, um, it did when you first put it on. So just take care of it and you know, you get that message across because like you said, it is a moving billboard. It goes fast, but something that looked good, you know, it, it, it helps your brain as well. Thank you. All right, the last rapid fire tip. So, hey, in all of this, audit your signage quality and look for immediate ways to improve. And, and for us, an audit looks like walking from the very front of the street all the way through your building when you're looking at your process for enrollment and, and look through it from the eyes of the customer. Think about their lines of sight, look at what they're looking at and identify where you think you can strengthen um, that visual experience. So whether it's a message, whether it's your brand opportunity, whether it's the tour stop, whether it is clarifying the information that you need to have, audit that, do it regularly and understand what you, um, where you have gaps so that you can improve those gaps. So let me, um, let me add to that, Neil. If you sure. Know. Yeah, you know, when you say to audit, you know, walk through the building and just look at the walls and see if there's stuff that's, that's outdated that you don't need, you know, clutter is, is a big eyesore, but something, having something nice and clean, you know, if you had an event back in, in March, you don't want to have it up still in November and you know, that's past. So just taking stuff off the walls that doesn't need to be there is very important as well. well that's excellent. That's a great point. I, I clutter, clutter can detract from the quality of the message that you have in other things too. Right. So that's, that's excellent. I guess I would challenge our, our people who are on the call too to, to think of the desk that they sit at, um, you know, in their, in their particularly the, the front lobby desk, if they have one, to think about that as a sign as well too. So evaluate what do you have, is that clutter free? Is that, is that reflective of the, the um, type of experience you want your families to have as well too? So, well, look, we, um, this is a really insightful, it was a quick 40 minutes. Um, Let's, we've got a couple of really just a, a couple of Q and A questions here, um, Ted. So I'm going to put those up or, or actually look at them and, and I'll ask you these questions and I may interject as well too. So um, someone's asked us, um, do we have any advice for approaching the landlord regarding um, landscape or monument signage? If you're located in, in a multi-business shopping center, um, Ted, do you have any, anything you want to say on that one or? Yeah, the, the main thing when it comes to having a landlord is, you know, it's only so much you can do um, with the, the codes and everything that's going on because they want all the businesses to match and, and look some kind of way. So the best thing to do, in my opinion, is, you know, have an idea of what you want to do. But instead of telling the landlord what you want to do, maybe if you can have some kind of drawing, some kind of visual so they can see what you're doing to improve. Um, you know, if you're, you're putting new landscaping out, that's not hurting the building, that's actually improving the area where it's at. So just being able to show them and tell them at the same time, I feel is a great way to get that across. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to get, in, in my opinion, you have to get your landlord excited. I guess the question here is asking, you know, there's two factors here. Can we get the landlord excited about what we wanna do for landscaping or mon monument improvements and then, in the situation where you have other businesses involved because you're in a multi-tenant space or a shopping center, it, if you've got requirements to meet, it might be, you might find your, you know, an opportunity to kind of get leveraged by, 
by getting uh, kind of a communal voice um, so that the landlord really sees that it's not just you as an opportunity to improve your space, but collectively the entire space. Um, right, and that and that, that's the sign that goes for signage across the business as well, too. Right. Someone's asked the question about what were the re results of the initial poll. So um, I can't, I'm not sure if you guys can see this on the screen. So I'm, I've got those results. We, we asked three questions at the beginning of our webinar on the, on the title screen for anyone who was on before uh, 12 o'clock. And so let me, let me just kind of refresh those and, and we'll share those. Um, so the first one was on average, how long does an exterior building sign last before it begins to show wear and tear in about 60%, 64% of you said between five and seven years and the choices were five to seven years, 10 years or two years. Now, of course, um, this all depends on what part of the country you're in, but on average, Ted, what, what would you say the answer is there? Yeah, the 64% is right. The five to seven years, that's mostly um, the time frame of where you kind of start seeing things happening. Whereas um, if it's painted, maybe the color's fading or maybe a bulb is blown. So around that time, five to seven years is kind of when you start seeing stuff and want to start taking action. Yeah, and I suppose if you're in, in really extreme climates and it's probably on the short side of that five years. Right. Um, and, and so, you know, you, I guess you could say that the more you keep working and, and reinvesting in your exterior signage, the longer it lasts. It's, it's just like any other preventative maintenance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, if you take care, of it, take care of it on the front end and make sure everything is functioning and working, you know, it saves you a lot of money down the road because that sign's still in good shape. Excellent. So the next question was, how often do you do a brand audit in your building? Um, and uh, look, the answers are telling guys. The, the first question, the, the options were weekly, quarterly, and never. And 57% of the audience said never. Um, and it was an even split at 21% weekly and quarterly. Uh, if you're not doing this every month, at the very least, you're not really thinking about how you're reaching your customers in, in a comp in a compelling way. And this is an industry that if you're not doing it, be assured that someone else is. So um, we want to be sure that you are walking your building with open eyes and looking at all of your signage opportunities and the entire experience that the customer has as they walk through your space and look at it from their standpoint. You, you might find that you can improve one or two things that really makes a difference to them. And, and as a result, um, you have a referral, you have somebody who may, um, recommend you and and for that matter you'll see improvements as well um, yourself the last question we asked was for schools that have changeable message boards how often does your board get changed um, and these answers daily zero percent weekly 21 percent of you change it weekly 36 percent of you change it once a month and uh, 43 percent of you change it rarely so we have to switch that guys the 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 reason that your buildings have the investments of these marquee or message boards is so that you can get new information out. So at the very least, make sure that this is something that's at least looked at every week. A lot of times these message boards are, are double-sided, right, Ted? Yes, most of the time. And, and now with the, the technology sometimes being digital, it, it's the equivalent of opening a browser and typing in a message that you could do in 10 minutes um, or less, but if it, if it's something that you have to get out there and hand change, make sure there are no barriers to changing that. Like if you have a very heavy cover on top of that, look at the quality of that cover to see if you can replace it or eliminate it so that you can easily get out there and change it. Um, but so weekly would be the bare minimum. We want to see you get new active messages to, to me. And I'll give you a personal experience. I don't drive by a single church that I don't look and read at what their message is for the week. Cause I tend to find that pastors and, and their teams can be very witty about what they're putting on the marquee board and it gets me to look at it. So if, if you're going to change it, I guarantee you you're going to get people looking at it, particularly if it's a drive by experience. So um, okay. those were the results there. Anything you want to mention on there, Ted? Yeah, I'm just saying new content is, is very important. You know, like you said, when you're looking for what's new every time you ride by that church. So, um, people in the community are looking for new stuff when they, they pass your business. So being able to change it, you know, never, um, you know, like you say, got to do a little bit better with that, but quarterly is great. And if you're doing it weekly, oh man, you're doing outstanding. So just keep up good work and, and keep changing those things out. Excellent. There's another question. Any sign material um, shortages due to COVID? Can you suggest any alternatives? Yes, I can kind of speak on that. So um, what we've seen here with the COVID, everybody's using the clear acrylic. 
Um, it, it's just kind of tough to, to have an alternate for that. Um, I guess maybe if there's, if you can use some kind of, um, maybe a, a plastic or something like that, but I, or if you could find some type of glass, um, but it's just tough um, being able to have that acrylic and everybody's ordering it from the restaurant business to the Home Depot to the Lowe's. Um, so hopefully they'll get this stuff back on the market to where you can order it regularly like it used to be. But, um, you know, just the best you can of, of finding something that, that's clear and see-through, but my recommendation would be the acrylic, which is kind of tough to find right now, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess uh, acrylics are being, the acrylic product is being used for face shields and, and a variety of different, um, you know, um, surfaces to, to protect folks who are working at a desk. So that then becomes a, you know, a material supply issue for anyone who's using acrylic in their signage as well, too. Right. I think we've seen probably about a 30 day delay on, on, you know, availability of critic acrylic in general. Yeah. Um, well, awesome. These are uh, good questions, good results on our poll. Um, we appreciate everybody. I want to make sure that you got, Ted, thank you so much for being here today and, and taking the time to showcase what you've got going on. We have another webinar coming up in a few weeks. Um, it will be Ashley Walker from our team. She is our, our uh, director of brand design and creative, and um, she is going to be showcasing the do's and don'ts of graphic design. Uh, on August 27th at 12 o'clock. So um, there's something funny going on with the screen here. Um, but ultimately, uh, if you have any questions between now and then, email us at info at betterbeansbranding.com. Check our website out, betterbeansbranding.com. And then uh, make sure you register for Ashley's webinar. She's going to uh, give you a lot of great insightful information on graphic design and, and the do's and don'ts of things that you can do in your business right away. So Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. We, uh, we appreciate your time and look forward to sharing this online as well. Yeah, thanks, everyone. And um, please try to stay safe, keep your family safe, and uh, we'll see you soon.